determined to move industry forward to replicate the benefits I have already seen to the companies we have already worked with. Through the development of quality processes, I have seen companies grow as a result, and by allowing themselves the ability to tender for speciality work, has led to more sustainable manufacturing business model. What we are um, starting to see a lot more of within the workplace, um, which I've been advised by a lot of uh, inspectors locally to me, is within the industry you're tending to find that a lot of organisations are moving to closed systems. And that's a good thing because obviously you are reducing exposure, uh, reducing occupational exposure levels. Um, there are also um, many benefits of doing that as well. What we've been advised is that there is higher productivity and also, um, we've been advised that there, the plant itself lasts actually a lot longer, um, the duration of use. And also, more importantly, is you're using less and less solvents as well. So um, that is a good change within the industry itself. A lot of open top degreasing tanks, uh, potentially nowadays, they are quite large. So when, say for example, you are going into the area um, to maybe clean out the degreasing tank, you will be exposed. If the area itself could be defined as a confined space. That looks very much like a hot alkali cleaner solution to remove oils and greases. And it's probably also removing the lining of the nasal passage as well. So this is where we've come from, but it's nothing like the way in which responsible companies are operating today. Quite often I'll get some of our members say to me, oh I'd like to go down that route, but that piece of equipment, the capital cost on there, it's, it's £80,000, it's £120,000. Yes, there might be upfront capital costs, but you need to look at the whole life cycle and then you might get a different view. What's the most significant factor about this is before you can carry out any of these surface engineering um, processes, you have to make sure that the surface has been cleaned properly. So you could say that this 12.8 billion pounds of coating all of that depends on cleaning, and that depends on getting cleaning right. But just think of the value of all the finished products. Coatings is only a small percentage of the value of the finished product. So we're talking about some serious amounts of money here, and a significant chunk of the UK GDP. Causes of mealing defects are almost always down to cleanliness. Poor cleanliness of the surface reduces good adhesion. If the surface is contaminated across a wide area, then mealing can occur uh, due to the poor adhesion of the coating to the laminate. So you just imagine, you've gone through all the process of producing that circuit board, and then you get a failure like that at the end. Just imagine the costs that are involved in that. Something as small as a printed circuit board relies on you getting that cleaning right. What I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get across here is you need to make sure that you understand the capabilities of your cleaning system to make sure that you don't get problems further down the line. Just imagine if that had been a component that had gone into a car and actually been assembled into a car and had got out on the production line. Just imagine the costs of the recall that would have been involved in that. So what initially appeared to be the cheaper option could quite easily end up being far more expensive in the long run. Every manufactured product requires some form of surface engineering for it to function correctly and every surface engineering process relies 
on the correct level of cleaning for it to function correctly. So, cleaning plays a vital role in the UK manufacturing supply chain. Can't stress that enough. It's uh, nice to see some familiar faces. Malcolm, hello. <laughs> And, uh, but it's also really good to see a lot of new faces as well. Uh, I really uh, enjoy Ebrim's passion about the whole industry in relation to really sort of spreading the message in relation to choosing the right chemistry, the value, value added part of this business to people uh, in businesses manufacturing. So uh, really great, great appreciation for everyone's time today, especially at this such busy period but actually, when you look at the technical requirements, you look at the geometry of a part, you look at the throughput of a part, actually, it's not that simple. And especially when you take into all of those considerations at the bottom to do with sustainability goals or regulatory compliance, protection of the workforce, protection of the environment, all of these pressures on, pressures on us as manufacturers. What do we want to do? We want to make our part at the end of the day. We want to get it out the door but we want to get it out the door with, without there being any rejects, but adhering to all of these points at the same time. You can't really get more diverse from darts to nuclear fuel rods, but the things that combine all of those things, really, is that there's a high precision, there's a high cleaning quality that's required. And that's either relating to the fact that where the product ends up, what the post-process is, or the fact that there's a tremendous amount of products being manufactured at the time. So the demand on that from an application point of view is very high. All of those applications as well are using solvents of one description or another, which is another point to mention. You either go down the aqueous route or you go down the organic solvent route. Uh, as if you mentioned earlier on, quite, quite rightly, plasma cleaning and laser cleaning and some of these things are coming out now. Uh, fairly early days in terms of advancements, trying to replicate what a lot of you guys do in terms of uh, requirements and throughput. But those are typically the two routes to go down. And we know that there are a number of options when it comes to organic solvents, and we know that there are a number of options when it comes to aqueous technology. This is my favourite slide. This will wake you up. So, at the end of the day, the physical properties of the chemical, yeah? Safechem and Dow, and anybody using trike in the room still, conducted an analysis of alternatives which was 90-odd pages to show the European Chemical Agency that in specific applications, trike was the only option. And that was because some companies who manufacture and supply other chemicals might think, well, it's a drop-in replacement, as David said earlier on. It's an answer to a maiden's prayer. There's no such thing. We know that water and oil doesn't mix. I mean, that's fairly obvious at the end of the day. I mean, we've got companies who are trying to use water to remove wax. Well, we use wax to waterproof things. So, you know, again, little one made earlier on, water and oil, what have we got to add to that? We've got to add chemicals to it to make it work. So again, we're increasing that potential amount of mechanical action or amount of time to replicate the scenario. Modified alcohols are an interesting uh, molecule because they are synthetic, they're manufactured in the lab and basically they have a cross-section. So they have much higher ability to remove things aligned with more polar types of contamination. So again, if you do have a crossover of types of contamination, when you look at that in more detail, uh, the, the modified alcohols can actually be manufactured to your specific requirements, depending upon your mix of contamination. With our partners like Ebrahim, uh, we're going through that whole process with 25 years of, of supplying these solutions to companies. Uh, and that's just what we do. You know, that's what we're paid to do, is, is to look in detail and how we can uh, find sustainable solutions for people. By choosing the right chemistry, you're improving the quality, and ultimately, versus your competition, 
with whatever they may be doing, you're adding value to your business. Yeah, I really enjoyed the event today. Worthwhile coming along. Um, certainly take things away from it in terms of legislation on the chemistry side of it. And I think we can use it to find a solution for our problem. Uh, it's very interesting because as a user of currently we're using trichloroethylene, um, and obviously we know the legislation is changing all the time. Uh, we wanted to just see how it's changed and see if there was any latest updates on what we might do in the future. Because although we're still using trichloroethylene at the moment, I think its days may be numbered. So we wanted to just see, you know, see what other people were doing. And it was interesting to network as well with other visitors at the event. So I found it very interesting. And some of the speakers were quite good as well. Some more insights into cleaning and looking at other technologies that are available. Yeah, it was good. Um, it's the second time I've come to this. Um, probably a couple of years ago I came. And it's uh, quite useful to keep up with changes and how things are moving on. So it's quite good. A list of other people's perceptions on uh, the change of things. Yeah, so it's useful just to keep updated with things. Oh, it's a, it's a much more interesting place to come. <laughs> Yeah. Worth the yeah. trip? Yeah, certainly worth the trip, yeah. Hi, uh, my name's Chris Arrowsmith. Uh, the company's called Middle and Burn and Finish. Uh, we specialise in subcontract uh, solvent degreasing. Um, came to the event today, very informative, kept me up to date with all the relevant uh, up-to-date um, details about reach and solvent usage. Yeah, very good. Excellent day. Just really seeing how companies have moved on in the last 10 years what we're talking about now compared to what we were talking about 10 15 years ago and a lot of the people who I've met today I've, re I've met on a one-to-one -one basis and we've made certain decisions now to change from trike to perk ideally we'd like to buy a new degreaser but unfortunately they're too expensive for a business of our size I think it's the opportunity of being able to meet people face to face as opposed to people by email or, or talking on the phone because I think uh, you can hear somebody talking and it, uh, it causes me to think of something else and I can come up with another question. And, uh, and so, so that it's the one-to-one, -one being able to talk to people that I take away most. Uh, the, uh, the event was very good, very informative. It was good to be, from the Health Safety Executive's perspective, good to be involved in the event to be able to put forward um, the things that we need to put forward, really, and to make uh, people within the industry aware of the risks that we need them to be aware of. That, that maybe how important cleaning actually is. From our point of view, obviously, we look at the products, the solvents, the risk of solvents, but actually to see how important cleaning is within the process of degreasing is um, something for me personally to learn a bit more about. Yes, it was very interesting. It's certainly uh, to be surrounded by a load of planes was certainly a bit different. <laughs>